Hello, this is Alan Moran and I'm going to be doing a tutorial video here on gravity assists or gravity slingshots. Now, in order to best understand how to do a gravity assist, you should first understand the concept of your ejection angles and interplanetary intercepts in the first place. Now, I am going to be doing some work in MS Paint here and I will be drawing with a mouse. So, apologies for the horrible, horrible drawings, but I hope it gets the point across. We'll start off with, assume this is Kerbin, this blue dot here, and uh, we have an orbit around Kerbin. We're looking down from the north pole of Kerbin and we're in equatorial orbit and we're heading in a easterly orbit. That's the uh, direction of the black orbit there. Now, what happens if I thrust prograde on one side of my orbit? Well, I think we all probably know that what happens prograde, by the way, is that direction on the nav ball. What's going to happen is my orbit is going to change like this and I will get a new apoapsis somewhere on the opposite side of my orbit, in fact directly opposite where I initiated my, uh, my change in velocity. And so I've raised my altitude above the body I'm orbiting, which in this case is Kerbin. Now what happens if I thrust even more in a prograde direction? Well, my ejection angle will widen. My, my new apoapsis will be much higher and in fact if I thrust very fast uh, prograde I may even never come back down. I'll, I'll have an escape velocity relative to Kerbin and I will enter solar orbit if I do this. So let's bring the Sun into the picture and Kerbin's orbit around the Sun which looks something like this. And let's say I want to get to Duna, which also has its orbit around the Sun. Well, we're do going to do pretty much the we were doing before. We're going to thrust prograde, and when we thrust prograde, something like this is going to happen. We'll be raising our apoapsis on the other side of our orbit, and we'll get our intercept with Duna somewhere around here. But what does this mean in terms of the angle at which we left Kerbin? So let's look back at Kerbin here. Okay, we are leaving Kerbin in its solar prograde direction. That's the direction we're leaving and that's the direction Kerbin is traveling and that's solar prograde. Now notice this line here is not going to be solar prograde. This would be a little bit radial in relative to our solar orbit. So if we thrust here that's not good enough. We need to thrust somewhere around here. That's where we begin our burn to get to say Duna. Notice it's on the night side of Kerbin, this being Kerbin's orbit this is also going to be the terminator. The sun's on this side, nighttime this side. We're going to thrust sometime before midnight. We'll initiate our burn and that will send us out like this. And this is pretty much a solar orbit uh, leaving Kerbin orbit. So our escape trajectory is prograde relative to our solar orbit. And that's how we are going to get a trajectory like this that's going to send us down to our intercept with Duna. That's the place to start, ejection angles and uh, solar orbits. And all of this gravity assist detail is also about your ejection angle. That's the easiest way to understand gravity assists. Okay, so let's say we've now reached an intercept and this is my target body. And here's the point at just as where I crossed the SOI boundary uh, and I've entered the sphere of influence of the target body. And I look on my nav ball and it says something like 100 meters per second. That means that I've started when I'm falling towards the target from the edge of the SOI, I'm falling towards it at 100 meters per second. And my trajectory will look something like this. I have an escape velocity when I, you know, because I've come in from outside the SOI and I'm going to leave the SOI again. And when I leave in that direction, I will also be going 100 meters per second relative to the target body. Now, the actual numbers here don't matter. I've just chosen these numbers because they're easy. So that's what it looks like relative to the target in the point of view of the target sphere of influence. So now let's bring in, obviously we're in solar orbit here as well. So let's bring our solar orbit back in. And our solar orbit looks something like this. And you can imagine that this is all zoomed in to a, a little dot just where that X is. That's where I got my intercept. And so what's happening, what has this done to my solar orbit? Well, I was going in that direction in solar orbit, let's say, and I was doing it at a velocity of, I don't know, a thousand meters per second. That's way too low, but again, just for uh, demonstration purposes. Well, that means that when I left my target body's SOI at a speed of 100 meters per second in the opposite direction, 
In an ideal scenario, I would now be going at a solar velocity of about 1200 meters per second, right? Which means that after I leave my target's SOI, my solar orbit is going to change. I'm now going faster, and just like before, that means I've got a new ejection angle. And if you are able to follow this away all the way around to the other side of the orbit, I would now have a new solar apoapsis that's much higher than the apoapsis I started with. And that is the key component to the gravity assist. It's the fact that my ejection angle from the target body in this case was pretty much prograde relative to my solar orbit. And so I've gained a prograde solar orbit speed boost of about 200 meters per second. Now you can imagine what would happen if I had started on the other side of my target and I'd come in something like this. And again, uh, I came in at say 100 meters per second and I left at 100 meters per second. But what does this mean now? Well, this means that my solar speed, my solar orbital trajectory speed, would have decreased down to about 800 meters per second. Now that assumes that I come in and turn around exactly 180. So if I'm coming in exactly from prograde on this side and do an exact 180, I gain 200. So what you may have picked up from that, uh, that previous example is that what matters in the gravity assist is how much our direction is changed by the target. We had an almost perfect gravity assist in that last example, almost all of our approach velocity in this direction was tangential to the solar orbit and almost all of our escape velocity was also tangential to the solar orbit. We've been bent 180 degrees here and that's why we've picked up our prograde, our solar prograde velocity has changed by so much. But what would have happened if this had been a less massive target, something like Duna, which does not have a lot of mass, or Moho? and can't change your velocity very much. Well, let's start from the same position. We'll start here, but when we come in, our vector will look like this and our escape trajectory will look something like that. Now, in either case, let's say we, we started our closure at 100 meters per second. Well, we're still gonna be leaving over here at 100 meters per second relative to the target body, but the component of that, which is solar prograde, is going to be very different. It's only this much, and most of it is in this direction. So what was a closure rate of 100 became an ejection or an escape rate of, say, 20. And most of our change in velocity has been the change in direction to radial, and this is going to contain the bulk of our ejection. So our solar, our tangential to solar orbit speed has gone from 100 to 20, so is a change of 80 meters per second in terms of our solar prograde direction. Now, that's still a gain, but it's a lot less of a gain than this was. And if we imagine a very, very light body, uh, our trajectory past the body might look like this. And we have left the body in almost the same direction as we arrived. We arrived at 100, we left at 100, and our change to our solar velocity is almost zero. We've picked up a little bit of radial component, which means we've dropped a little bit of solar retrograde, which means we've picked up a little bit of solar prograde, but it might only be like 10 meters per second or five meters per second, or it's not worth it. So does this mean that having your trajectory bent a large amount is the only thing that matters? Well, no, imagine this is the, uh, the very massive body again, and we start coming in from this direction and we pass behind the, the body. This is its uh, solar prograde direction is over here. We pass behind the body. Well, we'll leave, we'll leave like this. So how much change has there been to the solar, tangential solar direction of our orbit? Well, none. We've changed a radial out component to a radial in component, but we have not picked up any speed in this direction. So we would need to start from here and go like this. Or we could uh, just not come as close to that target body. If we started over here and we came in uh, on more on a trajectory like this, then it's not going to bend us as far. And now we have picked up some component of our velocity in this direction, and that's the key. Okay, so let's see this in action in the game. Here's... Uh, 
me in orbit around Kerbin and I've set up a bit of a prograde burn. Notice here's the terminator through Kerbin. There's the sun over there. So prograde in terms of Kerbin is in this direction. Let's bring that up and you'll be able to see when Kerbin orbit, there's Kerbin's orbit, sort of heading out in that direction. So let me increase the amount of prograde velocity I'm going to add and you see my orbit, my ejection angle will widen and it widens and widens and widens and I'm going to widen it all the way out till it's in my, basically a solar prograde direction and if I just come back a little bit actually I'm pretty sure I saw, there we go, there's the Duna intercept, I just saw the uh, color of the orbit change, there we go. So I have an intercept with Duna on the other side of my orbit. If I bring that around so it's got a bit of radial out component now. Well, unfortunately I've still got an intercept so I can't show you the difference, but you can see my apoapsis is a little bit lower. What if I had burned even further around, say there, so my ejection angle is now radial out relative to the sun. Well now my apoapsis is much much lower. You'll notice it also has come around a little bit. It's not directly opposite where I'm ejecting from. That's because of the radial component. A radial in component would move it around in this direction. What if, if I wanted to hit Eve? Well I'd want to burn all the way around on the other side, on the sunny side of Kerbin, so that my ejection angle was in solar retrograde. Well that's nearly solar retrograde. What does that look like? Okay there's my periapsis down around Eve now. You can see that the uh, delta V required for Duna and Eve are, are pretty much the same. Okay, so here we are, we're uh, getting pretty close to Duna here, and let's see what's going to happen. Well, first of all, I'm in Conic Mode 3, and I'll show you why this isn't very helpful. Um, you can't really see what's happening when I get past Duna here. It looks like it's just going to show my trajectory going pretty much straight past it and I can't tell whether I'm passing in front or behind or what. But let's just have a look at the change in orbit and wow, that is my resultant orbit right now. So I started from Kerbin's orbit, got my intercept with Duna there, and then I'm getting some kind of boost that's kicking my apoapsis up much, much higher, almost all the way to Dres. Now, Duna can't really do that, so why is that happening? Well, let me switch to draw mode zero. So you can, now I can zoom in on Duna and you can see what's happening. So right now my orbit around Duna is right through the middle of Duna. And of course you can't really do this, uh, you can't crash into it <laughs> and then escape again. But uh, if I could do that, you can see what's happening to my, my approach and my ejection. Now your ejection is the one with the, or the escape is the one with the little circle on it. So I'm entering Duna's SOI from in front of it in terms of its solar orbit. Here's the red line is Duna's solar orbit, it's heading in this direction. And when I enter the SOI, I'm prograde of Duna. So I'm coming in, coming in, coming in, and then assuming I could actually make this kind of trajectory, I'd turn around a pretty big turn here, it's about 140, 150 degrees, and I'm escaping much more prograde than I was. I'm, my escape trajectory is out this way, which is kind of Kerbin prograde, and that's why I'm getting such a massive boost to my uh, my apoapsis. But obviously, I can't really do that with Duna. Uh, so let's burn a little bit and change that so I'm not actually going through the middle of the planet and see what happens. Now you can see my escape trajectory is becoming less and less prograde. In fact, right now it's becoming radial out. If I burn a little more. To the point where I can actually get uh, some kind of periapsis around Duna. Okay, that's pretty safe. And now my escape trajectory is, well, it's a lot less prograde. In fact, it's got some radial and some retrograde. Now, this obviously doesn't mean that when I leave Duna, I'll be heading in retrograde orbit around the sun. Uh, it's just that that's my escape trajectory relative to Duna. What's that done to my solar apoapsis? Well, I came in from Kerbin, I started at Kerbin and my apoapsis is now, remember it was out here, now it's all the way down here. I've still gained some speed because my apoapsis is, uh, is higher than it was when I left Kerbin obviously, but I've not gained nearly as much and that's because I have converted some of my relatively retrograde trajectory into less relatively retrograde trajectory but not nearly any 
you know, 180 degree bend that would give me a massive prograde tra trajectory. And if I uh, was to burn a little more, well, I've actually burned so far that I don't have an intercept at all anymore, but oh, there we go. It's a little bit uh, touchy. Uh, but you can see, if I just uh, zoom out and you can see what's happening. So as, the, as I'm burning, this is gonna bend more and more and watch what happens to my, uh, my apoapsis here. It doesn't like me passing through the planet, but it gets higher and higher and higher and higher and higher the more this bends around. So that's the uh, the in-game version of the uh, the gravity assist. And as you can see, Duna's not great for this. Eve, on the other hand, and of course, Jewel can give you really, really massive changes in direction. And that's what gives you a really massive gravity assist. Now, of course, you can also convert some normal component into prograde. Right now, I'm converting this this retrograde component into you know radial out and a little normal plus so you can use planets to make inclination changes as well but i don't really want to go into the detail on that because this video is too long already so thanks for watching and i'll see you later